Hey everyone, it's Wingspan TT, and if you're watching, you know what time it is. It's time for Duel 2013. Today I'm playing Ancient Wilds, and I love an older woman, which is why, um, Ancient, I mean, Yiva, how many years has she got on her? I mean, she's got to be at least a couple thousand years old. I mean, like this guy, you can tell this guy's seen Yiva's, um, he's taunted her from, I, I don't know the hell I'm going for there. There's no joke there. Anyway, I'm playing Tyler Metevie, I assume that's how you pronounce it. Could be wrong. He's playing Kranko's Goblins and attacking with the uh, Raging Goblin, a great old staple card of Goblin days gone by. Anyway, I really like this Yiva deck, and in general, I hate green. I hate the color green, I hate the green mana, I hate green spells and green creatures. I hate everything green, I hate Kermit the Frog, so it really is a big deal that I like this deck. And why do I like this deck? It's not a Timmy deck, which is kind of magic slang for people that just like big creatures. It's more of a Johnny deck, which um, is kind of more for people who really enjoy combos and card interactions. There's a lot of cards in this deck that really work well together, all right? Right off the bat, we got some small creatures. Elvish Visionary here that replaces itself and lets you draw a card. Can't tell if that's supposed to be a guy or a girl. I am kind of attracted to it in an androgynous way, however. I don't know what that means about me. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Sorry, Tyler. Um, Wood Elves here, fetch out more land, and then once you get the land out, that's when shit, fun shit starts happening, okay? You got this guy, Roaring Primadox, who basically, at the beginning of upkeep, you have to return a creature you control its owner's hand. That may sound like a downside, but when you have Elvish Visionary and cards like that, cards that have a benefit when they come into play, that means that you get their coming into play ability, CIP, as it's called. He's gonna wonder what the hell I'm talking about. CIP as it's called, um, to trigger more and more often. And you got cool abilities like that to draw a card. You got the Wood Elves that can fetch more land, all right? You got this guy that's got haste, so even if you have to bounce him, he's got haste. And this is a great card overall. Four mana for four, three haste. Mace, that's already pretty, that's pretty well costed just to start with. But then whenever you cast a spell, whenever you cast two creature spells a turn, he comes back into play directly onto the battlefield. That is a really big deal. And the first thing I'm going to do here is kind of just, I'm going to chump block here. I have no reason to keep this 1-1 one, one right now. Yes, it's true. I could um, hold on to it for the Roaring Prime Nox, but that's going to be in at least two turns. The other thing is that really, I just not need to not be taking two damage every single turn, all right? That's a little bit scary. I could get, you know, beat down pretty fast. Now I'm going to have five mana on the board next turn, which means I could draw Vengevine or Roaring Prime Nox. So I'm probably going to drop the Prime Dox just so I can kind of like stabilize the board a little bit. Although I have to say I have kind of an advantage now. I got the four lands. He's got two. Wait. Wait for it. Wait for it. No. He doesn't have a third land. Maybe he does. I don't know. Maybe not. He's attacked with a 1-1. One, one. He has no other creatures. I, I kind of doubt. See? I knew it. And, and, and this is what I'm going to say. Everyone, I just want to take a second to pause the game and be a jerk. But I just want to say that the fact that he didn't attack shows me a couple things. One is that he has nothing he can play. All right, If he had some combat trick, he would just attack. So he's basically saying, I only have this one creature. I'm not going to lose my entire board position to Wingspan TT just by attacking. So I already know that whatever the four cards in his hands are, okay, they can't be scary. They can't be something that is a combat trick. Okay, So that's very important to know. And that is why... Between these two cards, I'm actually going to drop the Venge Vine and immediately start the beatdown. I'm going to switch to the offensive and force him to react. And I'm also going to tackle my 1-1 one, one guy. Oh, awesome! You on it. Oops, you're on it right now. I'm recording. Oh, okay, so I was wrong. I read him totally wrong. Now, what is he going to do? Is he going to block here and use the shock? He could do that um, and take out my Vengevine. But here's the thing about Vengevine, guys. Here's what you gotta know about Vengevine. Is, just like I said before, when you cast two creature spells a turn, you get it back on the battlefield for free. Now I have five lands of play and two creatures. He's got two lands and zero creatures. So I'm not gonna say he's a bad player. He kinda had bad luck. Of course, my opinion has always been you don't take a hand that only has two lands in it. The only way I would take a land that had two a hand that had two lands in it would be if I had creatures like you know something that could allow me to possibly draw more lands early on. So maybe that's something like having both the Elvish Visionary to draw an extra card and extra chance of drawing land. Plus this guy to guarantee you get a land. That's a big deal. 
Now what am I going to drop in play? I'm going to get a Roaring Primarchs in place. So I have a 4-4 four, four in play. Then I can bounce this Woodland Elves every turn and get more land. And then once I have 6-7 lands in play, I can drop the Worm and the Primordial Sage. So look at this guy. Six. Whenever you cast a creature spell, you draw a card 4-5. Four, 6-4-4-5 six, four, four, expensive. But look at this. Whenever you cast a creature spell, you get to draw a card. That's card advantage. And what's great is when you have something like this where you're playing new creature cards every turn, you get to draw more cards. When you draw more cards, you get to cast more creatures. And when you get to cast more creatures, you get Vengevine back! Oh my god, he's coming back with a vengeance. I really wish there was more than one Vengevine. I wish there was. And here, I'm just going to have the no-brainer return of that one. He dropped into play Ember Hauler 2. So that's actually pretty dangerous. He can use Ember Hauler to do 2 damage. And keep in mind that this is actually extra dangerous because when he gets an extra land in play, I can't attack with a 4-4 four, because four, he could block for 4. Oh, no way. I'm remembering the old rules of magic. Old rules of magic don't apply anymore. I forgot. So I'm going to attack for 4. Um, see if he wants to block or not. I'm In the old rules of magic, but not the very old rules, the kind of middle age rules of magic, you could block with a 2-2, two, two, put combat damage on a stack, and then sacrifice to do an extra 2 damage and wipe this out. You can't do that anymore in modern magic, um, which as far as I'm concerned is a good thing. But, you know, old habits die hard. You're playing through, like, the whole Urza Saga era, um, where Waylay, there's this card Waylay that kind of broke um, rules of magic. There's all kind of Morphling. All these cards were so overpowered back then. Yo, man. Yo, man. I feel for you. Rematch after this. <laughs> I... <laughs> um... So anyway, I feel a little bad for my opponent here, Tyler uh, Metevier. I do kind of wonder if Tyler Metevier is a Quebecois, parce que... Um, I'm just going to assume Metevier is a French last name, but I really have no clue. And he's got his 2-2 on the board. He's tapping out, so he cannot use that special ability. And what does this thing do? So his goblins now have 3-3 three, three in haste. I don't think he's going to swing. He is going to be able to deter me from swinging with the fatties. Um since he now has 5 blocking power. That's going to stabilize the board a little for him. And look, we're at almost the same life here. And I mean, that, that really says something. Alright, so I'm going to return the Taunting Elf. And now look at this. Look what I'm going to be able to do. i got 6 mana. So what am I going to play? I can draw an extra card. And that draw is not it's asking not asking for this. This is a mandatory card draw, okay? The Primordial Sage is an optional card draw. And then I'm going to drop Wood Elves so that I can get an extra land. But look, when I play the Wood Elves, what happens? Vengevine comes back into play. I'll draw the card from Wood Elves. And look at this, I have seven cards in my hand. Extra land in play. Holy shit. The board is just clearing up for me. And I could drop the Taunting Elf just to have something else on the board, but I want to leave this as a combat trick. And I'm going to play the Taunting Elf, and I'd like to draw a card. So there you go, my hand is just full. My my hand overrunneth with cards. And I, you know what? Despite what I said before, I'm just going to swing with the fatties and see what happens. If he kills the Vengevine, maybe it'll come back, but we'll get to see. And let's... If I were him, I guess I would kind of like double block this thing because it basically is all the card advantage. No point in killing the Vengevine, it's just going to come back with haste. Possible he could kill this thing unknown. This thing does generate card advantage for me in the long run, but it also gener it decreases my tempo because that's a slow down and replay creatures. I see. He's going to sacrifice this creature for the Vengevine. All right, and um, I'm just going to let the Vengevine die. I'm going to save the combat tricks for later. I couldn't have used it to kill him this turn. But I do have Taunting Elf, so he pretty much, unless he can kill everything, I'm just going to win. Because I'm going to attack with Taunting Elf, he won't be able to block at all, and then this damage is going to get through. If he tries to kill Taunting Elf, I can Giant Growth it. And let's take a second to look what else is in my hand. i got Fauna Shaman, great card, 2 for 2-2. Two, two. And you can ditch any useless creature card in your hand to get any card in the deck. So you could have this Elvish Visionary in your hand and ditch it and get one of these Worms when you have 7 mana. Or, likewise, if you're on turn 2, you could ditch the Palaka Worm. All right, because you're not going to cast it, and you can go get this Fauna Shaman. So it's really great in that regard. I'm going to return Elvish Visionary in my hand, play an extra land, and uh, this game's over as far as I can tell. The game's over. Uh, and so I'm just going to go over what other cards I have real quick. Um, this Archer, 2 for 2-1, two, Reach and Death Touch is essential for surviving the early game. 
and it can still have flyers. This thing is very similar to the Visionary 3 for a 2-5 defender, comes and play a draw card. It is a defender, but it's huge, so it's very hard to kill. Again, early defense. The worm speaks for itself, giant scary ass worm. It eats whatever it wants to eat, which is anything that moves. I'm going to attack now. And Wild Pear, which is another great card. Um, basically, whenever you get to cast a creature card, you get to search your library for a creature card with the same power and toughness total. Not even the exact same power and toughness, and put it directly into play. That is crazy. GG. GG. It reminds me of Korean games. Anyway, guys, I'm Wingspan TT. I am going to rematch Tyler. But I hope you enjoyed this game, and I hope you'll come to TopTierTactics.com to check out more Magic the Gathering strategy. Cheers.